Okay, so today we're actually going to look at how we do a, um, a balancing of the mount. So this is a panel test unit. Um, there's an equatorial mount here on the tripod and the head is here. I've got it not very well balanced here. So you can see it's, it, it wants to go its own way, uh, driven by the weight. Uh, the first thing to do is to figure out where are the locking uh, screws. So here is one. This is locking the right ascension axis. And here is the other one. This is the declination axis. So again, we have two locking screws, one for each axis. The uh, right ascension axis is, uh, what is, is, is the largest moving mass. And then the declination axis is just moving the head. So once we figured out where those two are, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna balance the declination axis. So we're gonna take the right ascension uh, axis and we're gonna put it horizontal. I'm not going to worry that it, that is not balanced yet. I'm just going to lock it so that it stays horizontal. The first thing we're going to do is balance the head. So I've got it, everything's locked right now, and I know it's not balanced. So if I release the declination axis, just, it just moves by itself, which is not good. I want it to be able to rotate, the declination axis to rotate smoothly, whichever direction I'm looking. So. The reason this is not good right now is um, the center of mass, the, essentially the point around which all the mass is distributed in the head is not aligned with uh, the rotation axis. So here, if I'm leaving the unit here looking up and I let it go, it wants to spin. It wants to spin because the center of mass is that way. So um, it's, a, it's a really a two dimensional uh, adjustment. There is the center of mass can be offset that way or it can be offset that way. So there are two steps to this. The first one is to put uh, the head looking up like this and letting it go. I let it go again with the brake off and it wants to spin that way. That means there is too much mass this way. Now the good thing is I can change that because I've got this uh, dovetail and this locking mechanism so I can actually move it. So I know that it wants to go this way. That means there's too much mass that way so I want to move it back. So I'm going to loosen a little bit of screw you don't want to loosen it too much so that it falls off and I'm gonna slide it so I'm gonna loosen a little and I'm gonna slide it I'm gonna slide it here I'm doing it by eye I'm tightening again it's much better it's almost good so now I'm actually good enough that it's not rotating by itself I want to do a very fine adjustment I want to sort of tap it back and forth and see that it's equally easy e either way. So now it's actually very good. But I'm not quite done yet. All I've done is I've slid it this way so that the center of mass is aligned basically on, on this axis. But it could still be off. It could be off in this direction. So to do that, I will rotate the head 90 degree. So now we're testing the other axis and I let it go. You can see it wants to rotate that way. That means there's too much mass in the front, not enough in the back. So I'm not gonna do that right now um, for this short video, but when that happens, uh, we don't have a screw to change that. We can't slide this back and forth, this direction. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to add counterweights in the back. So you're gonna need to open the box and basically add weights to the back until it's all good. So when you're done doing that, you're gonna be in a situation where on both directions it's going to be good that means in this direction when I let it go it's not going to go forward or backward when I rotate it 90 degree same thing it's not going to go this way or that way so that's it for the declination axis so then we're actually good with the declination axis when you're done with that basically you can speed the spin the declination axis any way you want and it's always going to be uh, balanced it's never going to want to go its own way when you're done with that and you're done adding counterweights weights in the head, the last thing to do is make sure the right ascension axis is, um, is balanced. So now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to lock the declination axis and I'm going to loosen the right ascension axis. So I'm loosening the knob and then I let it go. You see it wants to go head down and counterweight up. That means I have too much weight in the head. Now I, I could add counterweight but it's actually much easier to slide the counterweight. So I'm going to unhook the counterweight and I'm going to slide it back, give it more leverage, 
until it's balanced. So I slide it back here. So if I go too far, see, it goes down. If I not far enough, it goes up. There is just a happy middle. And again, when I get close, I'm gonna tap it back and forth to check that it's equally hard, equally easy to go both ways. So I'm doing a very fine adjustment here. It's good, I tighten it, we're done. So now the whole unit is balanced on both axes. So keep in mind, that you're going, need, you're going to need to redo this every time you add weight. If you add mass, if you add something, especially if it's something heavy, it's a, if it's a small wire, you don't need to, to worry about it, but if it's something heavy, you'll need to do this. And the reason it's important to do this is if you don't, if it's not balanced, uh, the mount may actually, uh, it will struggle and it may actually miss. It, 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 uh, it, it, you may not be able to point uh, smoothly where, where the unit needs to point. 